Welcome y'all to the Public Experience, y'all. We have another great edition of y'all today. And we have episode 99, y'all. That Russell 100 is, is, is fastly approaching the one now. We have some great people on with us today, man. We got my man Terrence here today. And we have a, a lot of great uh, special guest hosts with us today. We have my girl Samantha. We also, y'all know, I already know Brian, y'all. So we're going to have a good time today. And without further ado, let's introduce my man Terrence today, man. Hi, my name is Terrence Glave. A lot of people know me around the city as Steel or Steel Biz. Let me talk about what I do. Yeah, yeah, no, I do, no. I do, I, do, I do comedy. Uh, I write. Uh, I live. <laughs> I learn. <laughs> I offer knowledge. Yes. I take knowledge. I'm well versed in human and giving and taking like we all do. Yeah. And I, I love how you can be modest, bro. Because if y'all ever just look at, at his Instagram, like, I love the reviews of the books, you know what I'm saying? And, like, the knowledge he, he spits. And not just that, but the fact that, once again, he's had a different perspective to how we see things. And um, if y'all haven't, make sure, we'll have the show notes, follow him, follow him, or whatnot, okay? Uh, so I want to start from the beginning, Terrence, man. And I know uh, one of the things that we like to put on our podcast, we like to start with the origins. So when you were growing up, I, I know we talk about off, off camera about your origins. Let's start from there, man. And let's start from how you transitioned from to make it to over here, um, and how that that began. Okay, I was uh, I, I was born in Namibia, Jamaica. Uh, it's a country part of Jamaica. I'm sure no one has ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like Kingston, but it's not like Montego Bay. It's not like uh, whatever else you heard of. But I was born in Namibia, Jamaica. Um, and my parents, they've always, my parents been together for 50 years from December. Oh, that's, and that's, the, come on, we got to have that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have two siblings, two brothers, and um, my parents, they, my aunt was the first one to uh, migrate to the United States. And I think she, it's, it's like 15 of them, or something like that. So then my aunt, she filed for all her brothers and sisters mm. that came here. And my parents got the opportunity to come here. To America, which is America. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say this is part three right here. <laughs> Coming to America was like a shocking experience. Mm -hmm. Just like I mean, the first thing, the first thing that surprised me when I came to America was um, was white people. Why you look at me when you say that? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. You're, <laughs> you're closely related, but that's it. I am <laughs> definitely a descendant. Okay. Yeah, but, but uh, was was white, white people because I only saw them on TV. Yeah, so it was kind of like. I thought they were all rich, and I went to Cleveland. Did you go to the West Side of Cleveland? <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that, that a lot of us are struggling. <laughs> we struggle equally, but they are rich people as well. Yeah. But it was a, that, that was the first thing, like seeing somebody white face to face. That's only seen mm. on TV. I'm like, that was like one of the most famous things. And snow. Yeah. So two white. I'm about to say. Yeah, people are not in Black History Month. Yeah. We're not doing this. No, no, but it was, it was it was amazing for a kid that's eight that never saw yeah, it. Yeah, called the shot. It was just like, it was just a culture shocking thing. Mm -hmm. And because I have nothing against you know against anybody. Again, that's you don't different. see the icons that we made. No, no, I have nothing against anybody that's different. I'm just saying because yeah. our differences is what makes us into us. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's when you add eight to those differences that makes us. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. but um, yeah. So that was one of the. the the snow and, and, and the people. All things white. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let, let's, so growing up, we're, we're, so was the aspiration always there, like, okay, I want to be me Or were you class kind of, you like, you know what, I, 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 I want to continue going there, or? Yeah, when I was in, um, everybody always, my family always said I was funny, and they always laughed and stuff. Then when I went to school, um, everybody said I was funny looking. So it was like, because um, I was like, a, I was a Cheers to the fat kids. <laughs> but, I was, but it's, cra it's crazy because I was like I was like three fifty in the ninth grade. And by the end of the, end of the tenth grade, I was like one seventy five. Mm. Like because I saw I saw a girl and I was like I can get up and get paid. I think that type of motivation is. <laughs> but it was like it was crazy because um, I I was like I, when I was in high school I won most humorous, most talkative. That's what's so. up. And that's and it's, it's very interesting because when I went away to college we kind of had something like that mm -hmm. and I won most. Most talkative and most um, serious. Oh, so, and people always thought I was funny. I used to do comedy shows when I was in college. Mm -hmm. and, like, I'd go around and do little stuff in little town there and different places around mm -hmm. and on campus. And, you know, everybody always thought I was funny. 
And I used to drink a lot back then too, so that made me funny. And it's like even when I got when I used to drink a lot and I got ignorant, it's like he's just funny. Yeah. That's just him. <laughs> okay. I got a question for you. Um, so I, I'm a I love comedy, right? And a lot of com- comedians say that like their pain kind of fuel their you know crap. Is that the same thing? For that, you? that is true because um, I know that I would be having a conversation with somebody. I was having a conversation yesterday with somebody that was doing the same thing too. Mm-hmm. And she's not a comedian, but she's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. And I know that we were t- we were having a conversation. And I was texting her. And she will put laugh out loud for everything that's painful. Mm. And and I would like have conversations about things that's bothering me. And it would be like I would add jokes to it. Mm-hmm. Because that's your good. your pain, your trauma, whatever you go through, you try to find some type of comfort. Mm. Or, or or some type of way not not comfort in it. Some way to comfort it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so you add that that comedy and, and, and it becomes relatable. Like, yeah. it's like you yeah. try to make those things related because one thing I understand, well, like I said, when I was in ninth grade, I was 350. For about the end of 10th grade, I was 170, 175. This is what I, what I, what I learned. No, get the end of 10th grade. This one thing I learned. As insecure as you can ever be, the people that you think are secure are probably even more insecure than you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. I know, it's, it's long, sorry. <laughs> okay, by, by 50, like, I have learned that. Like, that insecurity is like, mm. because we don't really give psychology as much credit for what it does in humanity mm. as Ooh. we should. Mm. And because um, our experiences, our experiences are, um, what's the word? Our experiences is our evidence. Our experiences yeah. is our evidence yeah. to That's life. That's good. And how we deal with that, maybe should hit that again. But how we deal with life, is based on our experiences too, yeah. and it's and, 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 and it's, it's it's psychology. I'm, all of them telling you, like all yeah. of this is yeah. psychology. It's like, but go ahead. I have a question. Go ahead. You said something that is that stuck out to me because I was told the same thing my whole life. On every report card, great girl, smart, talks too much in class. Talks too much in class. Mm-hmm. What can you say about the people that talk too much in class? Because there's so many people I know, especially a lot of creatives. That always say that's they were always told growing up. You talk too much. You talk too much. You talk too yeah. much. Like, do you feel like you just being able to talk so much is what kind of help you build your platform? I think that um, as far as talking too much, some people we just have this this thing about discovery that mm. we want to discover stuff. So our way of discovering stuff is talking to people and, and, and having conversations. Right. And and I think that a lot of times talking too much in class too. Sometimes kids are bored. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And especially like you said you got great grades, mm-hmm. right? That's how I was. True story, and that's crazy that you brought it up. When I was in the sixth grade, um, my teacher noticed that I would actually talk to all the other kids, right? Mm-hmm. And I would like do their work for them. Like mm-hmm. no that was sixth it was fifth it was fifth grade. It was fifth grade. I would do their work for them and I would do my work and I would, I would get like really good grades. Mm-hmm. And one day she kept me up to class and she was like, I thought I was in trouble. Because <laughs> I would, and I would have them, I would put on the show for everybody. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm saying I'll make sure they, they did their work right. Mm-hmm. And she said, I noticed that you are bored with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That you are bored. You need something harder to do. So then they put mm-hmm. me in work. And I wasn't bored anymore. And I was just like, I started failing some class stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the teachers for pushing us. Yeah. yeah. Because there are some teachers that just let you slide yeah. and coast. Yeah. But when a kid, especially with a kid with a creative mind, a thinker, mm-hmm. will get bored. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be pushed. Yeah. So that, yeah, make sure shout out to your teacher for noticing that. Yeah, she was uh, Miss Abbott. Uh, Abbott Elementary. Shout, sh- shout out to <laughs> sh- no, shout out to Miss Abbott. I mean, I, I, yeah, she was she was a good teacher, and she just said she said you're bored, you need something else to do. So they put me in honor class. And stuff. That's so. Uh, and I, I don't know. I ain't saying this is a down for, for schools, but I don't know if school is the best place to cultivate certain gifts. You know what I'm saying? I think as parents, or as, you know, saying overall, where people can see the gift and be able to cultivate that. Because if you see a kid who talks a lot, obviously, hey, we need to we need to put you on on Disney Channel or something like that. Obviously, mm-hmm. you can act well or something like that. Um, I know for me, because like my son, same thing. My son, I would get, I would call from school all the time. Like, yeah, Israel, he's just he's just he's, he would cut up, get his work done, and start talking to the kids, start acting out. 
And once again, that boy didn't skip two grades now. Once mm-hmm. again, the work was not hard enough for him or whatnot. And now he, we got him in co and all the other stuff. But I said all that to say is that don't whoop the kids. <laughs> you get that back. If you, if you, if find out what, what the problem is and see if that's a gift that is underlined in, uh, in school as a problem per se or whatnot. Because once again, you can be hindering that, that same gift. So. Before they say they have ADHD, exactly, exactly. they were diagnosed real quick yeah. with something like that. And it's just, as human beings, our minds have to be challenging us for it to grow. Yeah. Like, it has to be some room to grow. So, absolutely. You, you know, because school is like, school is like a business. Yeah. Like anyway. yeah. So it's kind of like, sometimes businesses fail, and they fail certain workers. Sometimes they, they actually help certain workers. Mm-hmm. And they help certain people to become... Uh, successful, then you know, school has that design where it's like prison too. Yeah, where it teaches yeah. you certain, and you stay there all day. You can't leave. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 it, and it's not, and it's not uh, actually designed for one specific person. Yeah. Too, and yeah. when they can't understand what's wrong with that person, they 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 put a they put something on them. Oh, they put a mental health. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Which not saying that I do believe that there are people with mental health issues, and, and mental health issues are actually. Something that's that's powerful now, and I'm, I'm glad we understand it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they want to put something, and that's being lazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just put something there. Being lazy and being greedy. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the United States of America. <laughs> yeah. So I got a question. What's the difference between a comedian and someone who, like you said, who's just funny? You know what I'm saying? What's the difference between the two? Well, I think when you are some. <laughs> Good question, right? <laughs> you about to get deep. <laughs> no name no, drop. I, I, mean, I think the difference between a comedian and when you want to be a comedian when you're just somebody that's funny is um, you get paid for your joke. No, but the difference is the difference. <laughs> the difference between a comedian and somebody that's just actually funny is when you realize that you're funny, right? And you say, "I want to be a comedian," then you need to study what it is that you're trying to do. Got okay. that. Please. Thank you. That, that, that's good. That's good. That's when. I, I, it's, it's, I know it's wrong. <laughs> Can y'all get, get like a shorter one? You know, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm going to get another one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Or could somebody just clap? But, um, but yeah, yeah, the difference between the, the comedian and somebody that actually is just funny is that the person that is actually just funny, they start understanding that there is a actual uh, structure behind that. Mm. Yeah. And there's a structure behind keeping people's attention, and there's a structure behind how you execute jokes, and a structure behind how the jokes are told. It's because th- anybody can be funny in the lunchroom, mm. but to hold somebody's attention for a long time, like you say, like an hour, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, it's kind of there's a different thing to it. So I feel that a lot of times because of social media, we want to do things, but we don't even respect what it is that we're doing. Um, so it's like because we see, because we see, and we see, and we see a monetary base behind it, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. That's the only thing that we see. We don't see the idea of doing what it is we love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you, if you, I feel like if I love something, like let's say I'm, I'm in love with you, right? You heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I treat you. I'm gonna make sure I treat you good. I'm not gonna take advantage of you. I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm not gonna like just be like, oh yeah, I love you. I'm like, okay, I'm about to. Yeah, but I'm, every money I make is or just my. If you have a problem, I don't care. I don't care about you. Yeah. I want to make sure I cultivate this relationship. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a lot of people don't really cultivate relationships. Because I see a lot of stuff that we do, and even like being like, I see people with like with stuff. Because there's a lot of Tubi. There's a Tubi thing now, and I see a lot of stuff. I see people put stuff on Tubi. They be like, really? no, and hands down. And yeah. they put that stuff together because they love what they're doing. It's just that monetarily, it's not really in their That's favor right. right now, mm-hmm. or they don't know the right people. Mm-hmm. But then there's people that would just, I could have did that one phone. <laughs> <laughs> I could have did that, I did that last week when I, was, when I was with my, and I see some of that stuff. Or some of them, they think that they are doing the greatest, mm-hmm. but they don't want to, because people, we get, we so self-absorbed and did be mad. So health too, we have like these ideas that in the black community, we have like, everybody's a hater. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even, if, even if somebody's trying to tell, drop you knowledge, trying to help you. Somebody want to see, but because we do have haters, we do have haters because sure. there's a lot of people that don't want to see you success. There's a lot of people want to see you successful until you actually are. Mm, come on now, that's gonna be the time. So, so speaking of love, right? Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. Shout out to all the love. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm with you too. <laughs> 
so I have I have personally fell in love with the ideology behind purpose, right? So I believe God turns your pain into your purpose. You a jack of all trades, you're an author, you're a comedian, whatever the case may be, so on and so on, Most right? Most have a lot of jobs, so So, um, can you identify a, a time in like your comedic uh, career where you was like, because I believe God turns your pain into purpose, and your purpose is to serve others. When was the time when you just noticed, like, wow, I'm in this com comedy, I'm really able to serve some people really able to uplift some people, you know, inspire, like, what was that time you were like, dang, like... It was a show that I did, um, I the name of the show. Hey, what's her name? I, I feel so bad. You don't know, we don't know you. Yeah, 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 yeah. um, what, what's her name? She, Jane Doe. No, 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 I can't remember, I, I gotta remember her name, but, um, I did the show with her, and she like she was like a bigger name in comedy than me than me, and but she was headlining. I, I, I was a headliner for the show, and she and she came and did my show, my show, mm -hmm. and I just see like all the people that I bought just from social media, and I was like, and, and my and my manager told me like you gotta do a whole hour, and I was mad like who, like I'm not doing no hour, <laughs> like, I can't do no hour, and then after an hour and a half and see everybody still laughing, I was like yeah, this is when I know, and I saw how happy everybody. Mm -hmm. like, this is what I know that this is a part of my purpose. Mm -hmm. right here. And that was a question, right? Yeah. That, that was one of the moments, yeah. And after she begged. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to turn this because not only, like you said, you know, say so you have multiple jobs. I want to get into the writing now because you wrote, for, you wrote for a cap, for a lick, and I want to get like, how did that, how did that even come about? How did you say, okay? Uh, I'm doing comedy, but now I know I have a talent for writing scripts. How how how, you, how did that come about? Okay, so I've written I've written books before when I was younger. Um, I've published books. Um, very bad editing, I would say that. Yeah, I've got my experience for life. I can take better editing. Yeah. So I have really good stories. Like yeah. the women that read the books, like love them. Like the first book I wrote, it was kind of like I tried to write for like us. It was called Black. And us, but then I start realizing. Like, yeah, yeah, but then I start, I'm talking about like men and women. And, but I start realizing my brothers don't even read. That's all the sad stuff. A lot of brothers don't even read. Like, like I'm, re I'm reading two books right now. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. So I, I read a lot, but um, it's but it was like I gotta read. So I, the second book, I was like, I'm gonna write a book that women can do. I'm gonna talk to some women see mm. what they enjoy. And then, I read, wrote this book. It's called Resentment, and like every every woman I had read this book, like really loved, 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 enjoyed it. It's all Amazon. Um, I'm actually I actually re uh, edited the book, and I'm gonna re publish it again because um, I didn't like publishing the first time. Before, but that's when I knew I, I I know how people feel about the, my stories. Mm. I know how people feel about conversations when I tell when I have conversations with people. They, they, they're interested in what I have to say. Because You have to realize that in the story, with the story, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of pieces that happen in there that makes it interesting. And that's part of what people really like about stories too is when they don't expect something to happen. Talking about that idea. When they don't expect something to happen. So I feel like we we've actually been shopping this resentment around. Mm -hmm. Book resentment. If anybody's watching, then like, <laughs> we've, been, we've been shopping it around <laughs> because it's a really good story. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so I, I, I that's how you know that when I tell stories, I have a good. It's a lot of me. Yeah. So, my bad. Uh, could you give us a little background on like why resentment? That's a powerful word. Like. Why resentment? Because um, I don't know. The <laughs> he knows why. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, because the story because because the story is not about me. Mm -hmm. It's it's for, it's, a, it's a female. Okay. You know what I'm saying it's a female, it's a female character in the book, and her name is Danielle, and she's very successful. She's mm -hmm. a lawyer. She has, she's the, and she's smart. She's the highlight of success, and she has two friends, uh, Candace and um, Alicia. And in the book, uh, these women have like this 
great relationship with each other, but everybody hates Danielle that's outside of them. Mm -hmm. Not because of her success, because Danielle's like, she's very promiscuous. Mm -hmm. And she used her promiscuity. 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 You got it. Okay, that's power. Mm -hmm. And and the reason why the book is called Resentment is because Danielle has been like that because of resentment. Now, mind you, uh, can't, uh, Anisha has a relationship with a guy, Romel, that hates Danielle because of, mm -hmm. and then he has a best friend, Malik, in the book that uh, comes he, along. He with the juice. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that, that comes along later. He's successful too, and he's like a great guy. And then Candace, he has a, um, this last part, Candace has a boyfriend. He's from out of town. They met in college. She's a cuckhead. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, now we gotta get the book now. Wait we, gotta, a minute. we gotta get the book now. He's, he's, okay, it's promiscuity. It's not like my he's, type of book, he's right? A, he's, a successful, he's a successful uh, you know, <laughs> snorter. <laughs> and, and, um, and he has a lot of money, too. And he, and he has three kids. You know, mm -hmm. the, first, the, the first and the third are by the same woman, but the middle one is by a different woman. Yeah, it's like, Ooh, it's don't like, give it to I'm like, don't give it all no, away. No, I'm about to. So I, I got a question now. Are these based off of real people, or are these? Like no, the they're, they're, they're actually not based off of real people. But I, but you do find relationships that you've had in the past. Mm, you put them. You put them on, you know, because the the, the 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 young lady on the cover of the book, I know her. Um, yeah, I know. Her. I know her really well. And, and she, but she like, they, they were like, "Is the book about her?" And it's not. Like it's not yeah. about her. And then um, when I asked her, like, I told her what the book was about, and I was like, "Would you mind going?" Because she's like. Like, you know what they think is about. Yeah. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. Yeah, but the best stories come from based off of real life experiences and how you can kind of yeah. just navigate and narrate how the story is going to go. Like, It was kind of it was kind of interesting talking to women and asking them about how y'all talk to each other. Mm. To be able to write like that, too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To be able to write like that. And they, they'd be like, how do you? Because like, you know enough women, and you know how women talk when they write. Because I've been in situations too, because I've had females that are friends. Like, like, because I'm in a fraternity and be like females that are like, that are like in a sorority and they be like, yeah, they're friends. I be listening to talk. I be nosy, but I be acting like I ain't listening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I be listening to talk, like, like, man, they sound like us a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> but, but, they, but they actually worse. <laughs> so, so, like, in, in your opinion, your personal opinion, like, letting go of resentment, uh, you know, business ventures, uh, relationships, like, what do you believe? You gain yourself if you, if, you, mm. if you let go of the resentment that you have. And that's something that is hard for me to do, too, because you always feel like, the thing is, you always go into situations, not go into, you always leave situations feeling that you did everything perfect. Mm. And if it's replayed, you didn't do anything perfect. Mm. Mm. I'm saying, even, even, even if somebody, even if somebody, like, hurt you in situations, mm. or, like, let's say, it, it, it doesn't even have to be, like, a, uh, it doesn't even have to be, like, a sexual relationship. It could be like a friendship. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people already tell you who they was, and then you actually like the whole time, and you actually expected them to be somebody else yeah, based on who you are. That's good. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That part right there. Let go and let God be. Okay. <laughs> Let go and level up. No, that's, that's a real thing, though, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People need to hear for real. Yeah, like. resentment is, is 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 just it's so broad. Yeah. Like like it's like resentment. I, I mean, there's not really a, um, a, a connection with the two words, but like gaslight. Like you could gaslight you want some one person in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like I could gaslight because people use gaslight wrong. Like, All the way. They'd be like gaslight is basically me giving you a false reality of, of the idea of what's going on. You know? like yeah, me telling you like, mm -hmm. like you like me and you in a relationship, right? And I'm like, you love eggs. You ate eggs last week, but no, you don't love eggs. Mm -hmm. But you start questioning like, do I like, really like eggs? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You start you like, do I really like eggs? Now you could do that on a broad scale too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where we like, you see people online, they be like, um, like Kanye when Kanye was like, he was gaslighting people, mm -hmm. or like Trump gaslighting his way through pres his presidency mm -hmm. because he made people question with fake news, fake news, question your reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And resentment can be built big like that too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could resent you in a relationship, or I could resent people, a whole bunch, a whole group of people. I could resent just, mm -hmm. you know, like this. I didn't mean to talk. <laughs> no, you did. <laughs> so I feel like we just skipped a step. We went from, from 
you with, with comedy, when you started com uh, comedy, but we didn't get to, to where, when did the transition go from, you like, you know what, comedy, but let me start, let me start writing these books. Where did that, when did that happen? Okay, well, the books was way before the comedy. Okay. No, no, the comedy was way, because comedy was like, I don't want to tell my age, but the comedy was like, it started in college, I was mm -hmm. comedy and everything. The books came later, um, because I always have a love for the art. And then I mm -hmm. studied, I, I, when I was in college, I studied communications and um, I was, yeah, and, and with mm -hmm. my, really, yeah, and I was a minor, here. and I was a minor, in, I minored in journalism, so I, I wrote too. I was like, oh, okay, okay, yes. <laughs> so, I, so I wrote too, so it was always in me yeah, to okay. do that. So and so, when I okay, fast forward from college and then the writing, I did the writing, and then social media. I used to do these little videos, mm -hmm. and they'll be like fifteen seven videos. I'm like, Man. one of the videos went viral too, like millions. I made. You know how much money I made in that video? Oh, oh I made nothing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we was all excited. Because oh, like. oh, right. I saw it on somebody else's page. They sent somebody like oh. sent it to me. It was like, oh, this, and I'm looking like million views. Mm. And it was like it went viral. And then like people started hitting me up about doing comedy. And yeah. Then, um, Peacock. Uh, shout out to Peacock. She had hit me up and was like, um, yo, could you, uh, could you, could you do a, a, a could you start doing comedy? I'm like, because I was just watching her stuff, I see you, and I'm like, I've kept it more. And then she was like, yo, because I'm a man, you got me to pay the money. And she's like, well, you can make some money from doing it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Say that part first. Right, 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 right. So I'm, like, I'm like, okay, I'm like, yeah, money. So so then I started doing comedy with her. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's how that came about. She hit me up online, and then we met one day. And this was. He's talking about the scripts too. Mm -hmm. Well, the scripts, the first movie that I did, it was just to help put the movie together, though. Um, but I'm trying to think. The comedy came right. Up, the movie was Johnny had asked him. Johnny. Uh, yeah, so I was Johnny, by the way. Yeah, Johnny, um, Johnny, uh, Johnny Hunky had hit me up yeah. about um, helping him with the movie because he was watching my stuff on this because he wanted me to do the part. Okay. This movie, so he had hit me up on this one. We didn't know each other. He was like, "Yo, I want you to do the part," so I helped him. with Life lessons, and he did life okay, lessons. Okay, that's And then right then I was transitioning to doing comedy. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then, so that's how that, that I didn't write on life lessons. I wrote on, um, on the cap. On the cap. I yeah. wrote on the cap. And with the cap, it was more of a, it was a more of a structure right? So it wasn't like a, a, a story per se. Mm -hmm. I did help with the story, yeah. a lot with the story. But it was more of a structure. It was more of a structure to give me, um, to give it more of a structure because it was like, The writer's block that I'm going through right now is because I want I'm, I, I want to write something, and it's funny what I want to write, but I don't want to write it. But I do want to write it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to down for me, bro. I, I, I don't want to. I feel like I don't want to say it here, but I mean, it's it. almost episode 100. You yeah. might as well go yeah. ahead. And let no, I want I want I, I want to write I want to, I want to write something kind of funny about like these local. It, these local things that we do together, like mm -hmm. podcasts, plays, movies. I want to write something called local. I like that. And I would like to be a part of local. <laughs> and, and, and I want to. I want to. I want to center it around. Dang, I can't say it because then somebody can steal my idea. No, you yeah. good. You good. You good. You good. You good. Well, you but mean, after we get off the camera, though, I do want to tell you. Bad, bad, bad. What do you mean by experience, though? Like uh, overcoming that writer's block. Like, what do you mean by that? Oh, just keep living and keep doing stuff every day. Get into a relationship. Uh, go to work. Start doing something. Start reading a book and start um, start arguing with somebody. That's an experience. <laughs> go to the gym. Uh, like, start sign up for something. Like, experiences will give you a lot of emotion. Mm -hmm. It will give you a lot of emotion. It will give you a lot to feel, a lot to, like, to, to, to go on that side of your brain, your creative side. Because that's yeah. what that's what experience does. Yeah, mm. and I can attest as a also communications major, journalism minor, <laughs> writer, that sometimes you just have to step away. 
You, right. And when you say go live life, you literally have to say, okay, you know what? I want to write. I don't know what I'm going to write, but I'm going to put it on pause and just go and see where life takes me. Because yeah. right. when you take a step away, that gives your brain some free space to mm-hmm. not have to think about what you got to write, what you got to do, layouts and all that stuff. Right. So when you take a break, like taking a break, going to another country, seeing all these things happen, now you can go home and write about your experience. Right. So you have to be in the moment, living your life to be able to create. Because otherwise, where are you getting all these, where are you filling yourself up at? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can't just have creativity just out of nowhere. Like you have to experience yeah. life in order to be creative. And that yeah. writer's block is so real. So, and remember, remember, like your story is not exactly the story. So the experiences mm-hmm. that you have could just be little bits and pieces of it. So it don't have to yep. be exact. The exact idea of what you do. So it's like I went down the street to buy a um, to buy some ham at the, the grocery store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No you eggs. Could, you could be like you could be like I went down the street. You could have bought eggs in your story, <laughs> and you could have got into an argument with the cash the cashier, even though you didn't. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. these experiences is just yeah. like making Ooh. you find these things. Yeah. Because you're like this could have been how it went down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. You have some imagination to to, to, yeah. to to be able to write or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I got a question because, and once again, shout out to you, man, because you were multi-talented. I, like, I don't want, I don't want people to uh, negate the fact that all these things create. You have to be an intellectual person to process things. Like you were saying, how you have to structure these writings, this the, the comedy. All these things mean you have to structure these thoughts. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want people to um, miss that very fact right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I wanted to ask because I know, once again, um, you had the books. And then you write the script. So we went from the life lessons to the cap. And now let's talk about the lit. Okay, so I met. I actually let me see. Shout out to the shout out to cool shout city, out man. to shout out to Rick Walker. Man. Yes, shout one out to of Rick, the man. greatest people. <laughs> Darius Darius cameraman, one of the greatest people. Uh, the actors, uh, man, everybody on the yeah. lit. Uh, man, everybody on the lit. I, I, shout out to all y'all. But um, I met Rick. I met Rick actually at a um, at a pop, at a radio show that I used to do. Mm. Um, a radio show. I used to time my time, bro. I made a radio show. You know. What I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, here we go. What else? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I met, I met Rick, but he came with them, and that was, was like my first. There was a CSC CSC Posse. So um, I met Rick there, and we showed up to the to the, the cab. I showed up to the cap and it was like, that's the dude that I met at the radio show. Mm-hmm. And then we started working on the cap together. And then he saw how I work on the cap. Yeah. So then when he went and it was, he was already doing the leg. Yeah. When he was continuing to do the leg, he was like, yo, you gotta come on and, and, and write it. Because we like, we clicked. Like, yeah. It was cool. And he had like, we had different types of creative. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We had different types of creative. Like, and Rick is like really, he understands this is Rick. Rick understands the process, mm. and Rick understands where he's trying to go, and yeah. Rick understands where he's trying to go. He's, and Rick is very disciplined. Yeah, yeah. You know shot, shot, like I said, shots to that man. Rick is very disciplined. <laughs> if Rick want to do something, Rick gonna do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And with me, I'm like, I'm, I'm more of a um, scattered creative. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like I'm all over the place, and I'm like putting yeah. and putting. Yeah, you know I'm saying, but it sound good. And Tish, <laughs> t- shout out to Tish. Another writer, yes, writer, writer, yeah, writer yeah, Tyler yeah, Tish, yeah. and me and Tish would get together, and you know, and I would write stuff, and I really, I, I ain't gonna lie, I'm, I love writing on because I was watching a, um, uh, I was watching a, uh, I was watching a scene the other day, and I was like, I felt like a little kid because I watched the scene, <laughs> and I'm laughing watching the scene because the cameraman he came by, he was like, he was uh, editing the scene, mm-hmm. and me and him sitting there laughing watching the scene, and I said something like a little kid, and I was like, I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> that's dope. And, and he looked at me like, you know that teacher that's proud of you. Yep. Like, he's like, you did. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like, yeah. he was like, he was like, yeah, that's good. It was really, it was funny. I was watching. I was like, I'm gonna tell you what's in it. But it was like, yeah, it was like, I like, I love writing for the for the lick. Yeah. I love writing for the lick. It was it's funny because I haven't written for the lick in a while, and I'm talking to Ray. I'm like, I started having writing for the lick because I've been doing other stuff, yeah. and I've been had so many injuries this year. Yeah. I'm like, I gotta. Stop. Right, yeah. that, that was a great experience. No, so like I said, shout out to the lit. They're doing their thing, man. They, they, and I gotta say, because 
Howard said this, Cleveland has a stigma. Like, no one knows Cleveland for its production, for its film, for its TV and whatnot, right? But a lick is literally, they on Tubi, by the way. When you get a chance, see what we're talking about, the, the, the lick. But the production on it is phenomenal. It puts me back at, I'm a bit, I used to watch Wire all the time as a kid. I'm sorry, Mom, I know I should have been watching it, but I was watching it, you know what I'm saying? And it puts me in, in reminiscent of that. But our version of it, per se, you know what I'm saying? And it's dope to see that something like that is being created here in our city, man. So it's like, shout out to them, to them brothers, man. Shout out for you contributing to that. Once again. Yeah, and I actually acted on it, too. I, 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 I think I've seen that. I think I've seen that. I think I've seen that. My acting was, was pretty subpar. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, you see, they're better at writing. No, I feel it. Yeah, it was, and it was like, I just think, I, I, I don't know why I didn't do it. I, I, I acted on the cap, too. I, people was telling, said I did really great on the cap, but it's just, I don't know, sometimes I was just watching it. No, I get it. I we are tough Yeah, the toughest critics. And then it was kind of like when I, you think about it sometimes when, when I did the, when I did the cap, it was kind of like they told me that day I got to do a part. So it was like, <laughs> like everybody else got the script but me. Right, right, right. <laughs> like so it was like they were like you could just do your thing, and I was like, man, I gotta do my thing. So improv. Huh? So, yeah, yeah, it was very improv. Um, Improvisation. Come, come on, communication. Improvisation. <laughs> Wait, what? Improvisation. Improv Improvisation. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a word person too. But I really? don't but I don't know how to say it. <laughs> well, next book you pick up, get you a thesaurus and start I actually, speaking them words. Which out. is actually funny because <laughs> in my phone you if, no, I actually write down every word I see in books. Oh I my god. Don't gosh. know the definition. Yo if I don't know That's a real that's that's some dedication. <laughs> that's, 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 no, no. that's listen, no. that's and I never use them because I can't pronounce them. But I, you better but I know what that means. You better Man. look up what's inside the parentheses. <laughs> you better start mean. clapping out them syllables. I use the word on the wrong context. Like, you know what? This is some real constitution right here. This really requires a constitution of, of some sort. <laughs> the only time I use a word out of context is if I'm, if I know this person's stupid. <laughs> and I know they ain't going to know what it means. And it's like... <laughs> I'm like, this is fine with relation. That ain't even a word. But they looked at me like, he, he's smart. No oh, lie, but a dumb person would be like, oh, yeah. look at that vocabulary. Be like, oh, it's so simple. Yeah, I have been in situations where people have said words and used the wrong word, and I would like correct them. And they would be like, they get mad. Like, why are you like correcting me? Because like, I'm not an idiot. I told somebody one day, I said, I said, the, the reason why I corrected you is because I don't want you to do that in front of anybody else. Right, right. that's good. Because they were really That's terrible. real love. Yeah. They were really terrible. Okay, because definitely on social media, I stay on somebody's page saying oh, two man. and two and two. Man. Okay, sorry for your loss. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for your loss, sweetie. Oh, when, you remember, everybody was oh. crazy during the pandemic. And I remember I did something really stupid, like, um, during the pandemic, where I was arguing with somebody about, about antibiotics. But I knew the answer. I know you take antibiotics when you have a ba bacteria, when it's bacterial. Mm -hmm. I knew that. But I was not thinking, and I said, because you have a virus, I'm like, you take oh, antibiotics. God. So I'm arguing with this person. They blocked me. But it's, <laughs> so, so I'm trying to, I'm like, please don't block me so I can tell you that I know. Well, I know. Because I, I was just in the moment, because I wanted to tell everybody how stupid they are. But I was like, oh, I, I'm like, how do you, uh, how do you, could, uh, somebody called them, but I didn't know their number. They didn't know. <laughs> So I was like, I'm <laughs> like, block me so I can finish my yeah, conversation. Yeah, like, because you probably tell everybody I'm stupid. You probably walking around with your phone like, look. Screenshot. Yeah, look at this dummy. Look, it was COVID. I yeah, mean, it was. Yeah, I had a book club doing COVID too. See, see, man. Every time we were around the new things that that. Right. Me. It was <laughs> the know? next job. It was actually that was crazy with the book club doing COVID. The crazy thing, book club doing COVID. I was very proud because there's a lot of brothers. In Mm, okay. that's they, was, they, they was quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of them was quiet. I saw one of them in the gym the other day. He's like, yeah, man. I was talking. He was like, I was talking to my wife about the book club just the other day. And here you go. I saw him at the gym. But they were quiet. A lot of brothers was quiet in the book club. But the book club, it's too warm outside. But um, you know what? <laughs> it's, too, it's, it's too warm outside. You know what I'm Cleveland do. Cleveland do. When you get warm outside, brother. When you get warm outside, it's over. It's yeah, over. but um, but the, it was a lot of brothers. Yeah, the, I, I lost my train of thought, but during the book, during the um, during COVID, I had a book club. There was a lot of brothers in the book club, and it was really, it was really good. The first book we read was Kendrick. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah, seen the web series? The, I ain't gonna lie, no. Uh, Hulu, it's on Hulu. Okay. So, so. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, Kendrick. Okay. Kendrick, it was really, it was, it was a really good. Book. Okay. So I, I, and I'm glad you was turning to my next question because we're talking about the past, talking about the present, we're talking about the future, brother, because 
I would love to see one of your books turn into a screenplay or to a feature film or whatnot. Is that is that next up for you? I, I wanna um I want resentment. I like anybody that's trying to you know, shot like <laughs> hit me up, you know what I'm saying? Sign this non disclosure, I'm sending it to you. Okay, so resentment. and and the book that I'm writing, um did I just say the name of it? I shouldn't say the name. Okay. I said I say the name, of it, but, the, but that I want that to be like because I have never seen anybody put anything like that mm. on film. That's good. The only time I've seen something like that, I can't remember the name of the show, but it was a show that was on. I think it was on Hulu. I can't remember what it's called, but it was a show about a reality TV but show. It was a show about a reality TV show, but they were like behind the scenes what happened on a reality TV show. Mm -hmm. And it was good, like it was a yeah. good show, yeah. but it got no, like, it got no pub. You know how, like, you know how we can be sometimes, some of us be like, if we don't see enough of us on there, we like. Mm -hmm. You ain't never lie. I got, you know Give I, me three minutes. I was about to say, I, you ain't never lie. I got, I got, I got three character black minimum. If you ain't got three characters or, or, or more, I, I can't rock it. I, I, <laughs> but I feel like it's entertainment and Sometimes you just gotta get up out of yourself and just mm -hmm. watch, and just watch. Yeah, you just right. gotta watch it, like because right. they, there's some really good stuff that don't right. have us in it. I know sometimes it is. You do want to recognize and and realize that we are part of this whole thing too. So you want to yeah. see something that looks like you're there. Yeah. But sometimes I have watched things where I'm not there at all, and okay. I've enjoyed it. Like mm -hmm. this is like really, okay, really good. But I like the fact now that they are trying to put us. In. Yeah. And they're they are they are trying to like I know that we still have a lot that's going on because mm -hmm. of the psychology in America yeah. and how they have messed up everybody. Yeah. Um there's still a lot going on. But there but you do get to see a lot more of us. Like we go on Netflix, we, we got a we got a, we got a, a quota. Yeah, I was about to say we, yeah. we got a, a minimal like, like, we got a little corner on yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ever watch an old show old show, um y'all ever watch uh Three's company back in the day. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You ever seen one of us on there? No. I'm like every once in a while. I'm like seeing a distant cousin. Like yeah, you've never seen a black person. No, oh you? no, I'm talking about the Hispanic people. Like no. every once in a while, just Yeah, but then I saw like on Three's company, I saw like I saw a black person. Like, no black people on Three's company back in the day. It was but it was like. Oh, right, okay. right, 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 right. No, 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 prime kids. Like, like friends. No offense to friends. I think yeah. the only person we had on there was Gabriel Union, and I was like further in, into the. Yeah, yeah. And was, didn't they, one of them date the black girl? Yeah, they, they, yeah. It was Joey Ross. <laughs> now, I go lie. Back in the day, when we had cable, unfortunately, for us in the hood, the only thing we had was friends. So, yeah, well, I'm I, friends here. I have, I have never. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> your homework is to watch no, season to, one. No, to go to sleep. Like, sorry, that's <laughs> oh, wait, so other people do that? But don't tell them to go to sleep, Oh, too? yeah, that's one oh, of my go Oh, okay. Yeah, Lord of the Rings is one of my go to sleep. Uh, the, Hobbit, no, right, yeah. the Hobbit is like my go to sleep. Okay. Like, I need something long so I can go to sleep. You know what? Now I think about it. I watched all of Game of Thrones, and it was rarely us in there. Newer, the, the new series has in there, but yeah. the old one did not. You it know is. what I'm saying? But you're right. That you, that's, that's a great example of a, of a son that was so good. I'm like, damn, this is good as hell. I ain't and, 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 and I think, I think that it's, it's, it's very important that they put it up as something because we are, like people in America now, we are dealing with a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. Even trauma that does not exist. Yes, and I love, because we talked about that before off camera. You, talk, you bring a great point. You were talking about how uh, unfortunately with Black History Month, that's all we kind of see yeah. is the mm -hmm. trauma that we the people have endured. Uh, versus seeing the triumphs and um, the things that, and I hate how slavery, black didn't start with slavery, guys. I'm, you know, so I'm sorry to put you love what you think so. Um, but um, how we have to get out of that mode or whatnot, you know what I'm saying? I'm just thinking, oh yeah, it started in 17 something, no, I'm sorry, with slavery, just when, when, we, when we, they started bringing people from Africa over here to, uh, to America, that was the beginning, it was way before that. We, uh, we are literally inculcated in every part of this world, one way or another, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I love this quote that said, the deeper you, you dig in the ground, the more of us you see. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to Look, it's Black History happening right here, y'all. Like, 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 right it's, here. it's a book I'm reading right now um, uh, called Cuba, uh, Cuba and American History, where it talks a lot about um, black people being in those countries before, mm -hmm. um, being a part of, uh, just being a part of life and how this whole, Miseducation of, of where everything actually comes from. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? 
And, and what we're saying about, about trauma, about black trauma, sometimes trauma is just taught to us so much. And I'm not saying that they, things doesn't, that nothing happen. We know that systematic racism, have, systematic racism that comes from slavery and, uh, and oppression is a big part of why um, the psychology is what it is yeah. in America. Mm -hmm. But it's a continuation of us just living with those traumas and, under, and only to understand that that's all you are. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's damaging to us. Like, I had a conversation in the barbershop. I don't want to go too long, but I had a conversation in the barbershop. Yeah. Okay, good, good. I had a conversation in the barbershop the other day, and I was in there, and we are talking about police. And they were telling me how how nervous they are when they see the police. Oh, yeah. And they were yeah. like, they were like, and they asked me about nervous when I see the police. And I said no. And they said why? And I said because I I, I understand. I, I get it. I get that you are going to because it's, I've been in situations where police pull me over. Yeah. Right. And and I know like, dude, why you got me here this long? But I'm not gonna live my life based on oh, this yeah. because that that's messing with my mental health. That's good. Yep. That messes with my mental health. So I'm not gonna be this because that's not because I felt like the, when I said that they felt like I wasn't down, mm -hmm. like because I, because I wasn't trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like oh, that's good. It's like yeah. it's like they like oh you the only way to be down. And I was like, well, why aren't you like? I was like, well, I am a little nervous. They're like, why? I was like, it was like, oh, okay. Then they felt comfortable. I said, yeah. Mm. I, was like, I was like, because I don't want, because I want my insurance to go up. Okay. <laughs> That's real. It's the one we always say that. That's real. <laughs> and they looked at me like I feel like I was on Friends. <laughs> <laughs> they were like this. They were like this. Like, this. Mm. <laughs> and I said that, bit, but it's not that. I'm not trying to negate the fact that black people have been through something. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to negate yeah. that fact. It's just that I just know that it's not healthy to only live your life based on trauma. And sometimes you teach your, you teach younger people, like when you see the police and you get pulled over, you teach them to be to be so scared yeah. or to be so um, respond. It's like a, not even like a a, a, um, a normal way to respond to being pulled mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. to where they put themselves in more danger. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, cause when you pull over, like like my, I was talking to one of my, my talking to my father, he was talking about my, 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 he was like talking about your, your nephews, y'all can tell them, you know, put your hand on the steering wheel and just, I was like, don't tell them, tell them to put their hand on the steering wheel, but don't tell them to be scared. Because right. the, because this dude that graduated with all C's is looking, is looking at them like, is looking at them like, why is this dude so scared? So it starts a whole, confer, it starts a confrontation. Yeah, right? yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you guys to still teach people to be, to if they know that they're doing the right thing, to, to be, to act human in that yeah. situation. Yeah. Because because I feel like a lot of that it, it doesn't serve you any well purpose. Because mm -hmm. I see there's people that's addicted online to to that trauma and like sending me stuff all day, sending me stuff oh. like all day, and, it, and it's like, how much are you getting paid for this? Mm -hmm. Listen, how much is this taking care of your kids? Yeah. How much is this bettering the community for you? If, if, if you if you actually are such a leader of this, mm -hmm. and you feel like you own so much of this. To be the voice of reason behind it, give me the rationality and the reasoning why you're sending it so much. I don't want to be a part of the trauma. Listen. I, 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 real quick, like, uh, even in regards to you talking about the trauma, and even going back to when you were talking about you watching friends, like, I believe that, like, that is a way of you coming out of your comfort zone. And, like, how rewarding and, like, what opportunities have, like, developed for you with you, like, being a person that, you know, get out your comfort zone when it comes to certain things? That, that's funny. Yeah, he good at this, man. Yeah, he is. That's what I want to say. I want to know, man. That's crazy. That's because he got that title neck, y'all. <laughs> 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 that's that Zeus suit. That's what I want to say. Yeah, 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 that's what people we meet on vacation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I ordered the book. And I'm like, this is getting out your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Cause I'm a black man from a, that from Jamaica, moved to 131st uh, 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 over there in the hood. You know what I'm saying? So people meet me on vacation, that sound like, that sound like Reese Witherspoon. It's not like the <laughs> whitest <laughs> book ever. And, 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 it, and it was, <laughs> and it was. Cause I was like, I'm gonna read it. It was the last book I read last year. I'm gonna, look, I'm gonna read it for a week. But guess what? I enjoyed it because you know I saw something different from a different view from somebody else that was like 
And it, and it actually, the, the book actually, I, I see that it can help my writing. Because mm, it, it is a bestseller. It is a bestseller. I mean, it wasn't like, I won't be reading the whole book. I won't be reading part two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I could see that sometimes leaving your comfort zone, just like we was talking about, y'all said watch those shows too. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't understand, it's a lot of stuff that you could learn because because a lot of different cultures structure things different. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. a lot of different cultures have more structure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They have more structure. But the great thing about us is we don't, you ever watch a black person dance? We don't need that much structure. You ever watch a black person yeah, dance? Yeah, but you ever watch a white, white person that can dance? A white person that can dance, yeah. they be concentrating. Like, <laughs> it's <laughs> what into it, what into it. Because they concentrate like, but yeah. the black person that, they be chewing and eating good. And they be like, how they do that? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Because we like, because we just, we got that natural artistic yeah, yeah. Uh, back to Africa thing going yeah. on with us. You know what I'm saying? But um, but sometimes I feel like you, because there are certain things that they do that I feel like, wow, that's, let me add this to this. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, or let me let me read this because this is very interesting. I don't I don't read book based on who, what color the person is that wrote the book. Mm. I do read black, black literature, but I don't. I don't have to read mainly black literature. I'm saying mm -hmm. I'm, I'm re I, right now. I am reading a book by. Um, by it's February now. Yeah, right. I, I am. I am. The book that I'm reading right now is by Ten Easy Coats. Uh, we we are eight, we are eight. Um, we were eight uh, years in power, and I am also reading um, an American hi uh, history Cuba. But um, before that, I, let me see what did I read before that. Before that, I read. Let me see. Was it black? Do you have like a listing of like no. your top ten books you should read? Before that, I did read something like um, I read um, Open Waters, and then uh, but I mean, there's, uh, there's so many books that um, that I read. But I read um, Dark Psychology and Gaslighting Manipulation. That's not. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do you have a listing of like top ten books? Mm -hmm. That's I should put one in there. You saw it here first. Right. That's all I'm saying, man. Okay. I oh, want my credit. I, should put I, I think the best book I read, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, I feel like everybody should read this book. It's called Happiness Hypotheses. Because mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of those self help books that try to get you together, yeah. they're all the same book. Like, don't let nobody fool you. Yeah. Like, a lot of those books are the same. They're the same book. For sure. Man, I'm just right. a different cover. But that book <laughs> had so many gems in there that was different. And I really, because all you got, if you, you ever notice a book notes is bigger than the bigger than the book? Actual book yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. That's because they tell you what they stole the information. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. it's yeah. on that information. Yeah. yeah. I remember Secret. I read the Secret, and I remember reading that book. I remember, I remember the book like twenty two, and I remember like after book after every book after that, like you said, it was just like it's kind of like the whole manifestation type of deal, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's it, it gives you an idea of yes, I'm trying to become this better person, and this is how. I'm yeah. And then they go to somebody else. Like, how did other person tell me? Okay, I'm going to add minds with this. Too. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. Like that. And it was, it, what was that one book that I read? And I can't remember if it's a book that I read. And I didn't like the book, but it was one chapter that was so good. Uh, so I have a question. Hardback or ebook? Uh, you guys have that physical copy? Yeah, yeah, I have never, ever in my life. Read ebook. Get out of here. I'm yeah. like, and I got an iPad. I have never. It's like, just something different about, yeah, about opening a book and turning the page. Even the smell of a book. I used to yeah. like the library a lot. Oh, so. you're a nerd nerd. <laughs> 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 oh, you got picked on too. Oh, <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> it's, fu it's funny because I remember I used to like not tell anybody I read. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. I like being younger, like, would not tell anybody I read. That's wild. That's because wild. they would be like, and then when I realized that they can't even read, <laughs> it was like, it was like, yeah. That explains it. That explains everything. <laughs> and a lot of times too, we cannot read. A lot of times, people can are literate, but they can't read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people. Because I remember like a while when I was younger, um, but I was a, a wee kid, so I don't know this is what people now. But but no, but but I remember like reading is like you you can read and be able to know the words and know what it is, but you have to be able to put the story idea together. And Knowing where this is, because it's hard to do it. Because I know people that yeah. I think that some people, a lot of people, got ADHD. They have like um, what's another? Okay, 
Instagram overload. No, they, they have, but they have certain things that they can't. Their, atten- their attention, they, they, yeah. they can't have hold their attention to like really put that whole book together. Yeah. The whole idea of that book. And I know you said like, like this, that's sporadic thing. I you see it too often with people. They'll put something together and like be so sporadic. But most I, I've literally seen where that so there'll be two different people. You got the people who do sporadic thinking they'll have great ideas here, here, and there, and then it takes somebody, like you said, come outside, like, okay, he's got together one whole thing. Like how you said, the structure for the cap or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Same ordeal or whatnot. Yeah. And, um, so, but once again, I, I think this this episode let me realize there are different modes of, of creativeness that we all specialize in, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So shout, shout out to the different creatives, and once again, if anything, learn how to capitalize on how you are as a creative. Because I can say that I have enjoyed myself today. Y'all been amazing. We appreciate you, bro. Because, like, like I said, hey, because uh, um, uh, I love what this podcast does because, again, we have great minds like yourself and this is a different perspective. Because y'all know, podcasting is literally my university. You know what I'm saying? I ask questions I want to know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah, so happy to be here. You know, yeah. like that and whatnot. But I get a chance to pick the minds of great people and whatnot. And it helps me. And I know it helps y'all because obviously I watch it. But, um, uh, but the whole point of this podcast, there are great people inside our city. You want to go outside of our city, you know what I'm saying? We got great people here that are doing these great things. So uh, that's why I love this podcast, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all make it possible, so thank y'all for that. So transition to my, my question is, once again, we created this podcast because you got land, you got California, you have, you got places all over the United States where there are hubs of black creative, black entrepreneurs. And what you said, we need to have that here for our city. But unfortunately, our, our city has a stigma of us not coming together, right? Mm-hmm. My question to you is, you have been an example of collaboration. How do you think to fix that so we can uh, stop that stigma from being that for our city? Just do like what I do. Like, uh, collaborate with certain people for a while, and then they thought they were going to learn to collaborate with folks. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm joking. You joking, but it's true. <laughs> no, no, it's, she right. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, he is because <laughs> it's like because so you start realizing like you know you have creative differences. I'm creative differences. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> overnight, I'm like, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's kind of like you do have to realize that sometimes you overstay your welcome, sir. Yes, mm. yes. You do realize that. I was long ass button, but you know what I'm saying. Right. Like, I, I, need, I need, I need to hit that. <laughs> Identify no seasonal relationships. Yeah. yeah. I, okay, because it's, 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 not, it's not that these are like bad people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like it's just like okay, we did this because a lot of times when you leave, because I don't have people follow me and follow me Damn. again and then follow me and then follow me and be like, it's, real it's, man, I'm like, yeah. we in a relationship. This, 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 is, this is toxic. This is this is this is this is weird. And people I work with, this is weird. But for the most part, I can say that I can say that 85 percent of people that work in the clinic probably tell you like, yeah, I will work with Terrence. Mm-hmm. I work with because you. I was about to say, I was about to say that's a, that, listen, Ricky once again was like, man, I gotta, gotta get Terrence on. Yeah, one yeah. so it's so it's kind of like, but it's like, I'm not saying that the people that I have worked with and that didn't work out, it's their fault. Yeah. It's just that we're, we have different ideas, that's good right there. we have different mm-hmm. views, and it's kind of like, it's supposed to happen how it's supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, and, and I wish and I wish them the best. That's good. Yeah. I guess. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. But you know what? That level of understanding your yeah. creative genius, knowing that okay, you know we've done this project together, this project. It's time for us to kind of navigate some different ways, learn yeah. some new things, um, connecting with different people. Because then you never know, you have to circle back around. Yeah. Like I don't like what um, Darius, the, 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 um, the cameraman for, for the um, for the uh, for the link, the, the guy's cameraman. For the, I when I did a comedy show, he's my camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, I bought him over to, to Life Lessons. Mm-hmm. I bought him over to the cap. Mm-hmm. I bought him over to the leg. Mm-hmm. Some people you just work well with. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. right, and right. I know Darius has an idea, have a, and we, we think about it. And plus, we, 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 we both powerful, man. You know, we both <laughs> so, so it's like, um, put that, you know, put that. Sometimes, Talk to office, man. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> you are able to, like, to, to work with people on a long term basis. And I think that I think that we need to start understanding that um, it's not really 
I hate you. That's why I'm leaving this project. Mm -hmm. And that's what we, that's the problem. When, when you ask a question about people like leaving and having resentment and stuff. Because it's always, because hater is the thing in the black community. I remember I used to work with, uh, I don't know if y'all know, Philip, Philip Wheaton. Like, mm -hmm. I yeah, he used to do Okay. <laughs> I remember, no, Philly was on. Oh, I'm sorry, you I used to work with him back in the day and when, when he was when he first started like, way back in the day. And I was like, I'm about to leave him and write books because they used to talk to We grew up together. We grew up together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm about to leave him and I was like, I'm about to go write, start writing my books and stuff when, I was, when he had first started his business. And I remember the last thing he told me, like, he was like, man, we always family. Mm. And because I, I expected to go in that, um, to tell somebody I ain't working with them no more. Knowing that it's not because I feel any way personal about you, mm -hmm. it's just I wanted to do something myself. It was crazy that he un he, un he understood that. that he understood that. That's you know what I'm saying? And he was like supportive. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, very supportive. Cause yeah, yeah, but my comedy show was very like very supportive. But some people are like, "Oh, you don't want to work with me no more." So well, yeah. I hope I wish you nothing in life. Ooh. Yeah. I wish you nothing but 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 drama. And I'm gonna make sure nobody else want to work with you. Because that's because that's how people that's how people are. You know what I'm saying? People feel like if I can't use you, I don't want nobody to use you. That's real. That's not too much like a relationship. And then, <laughs> right, right, and, and, right. and then plus, I don't want it, I don't want you to go tell everybody how I really am. That's mm. the part right there. Yeah. You want know, to go hit that right That's there? the part. You want know, to hit that, hit that with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I watch this podcast with the dude, the dude. So he's talking about how other communities where they understand when it comes to business, it's just that. Mm -hmm. And he'll say he'll he'll sign a two year contract and after two years they'll re they'll reassess whether they should continue on or should they should they uh, go to some way and even if they do once again it's never personal yeah mm -hmm. because the sum is done we done we need to do we made the money and now we understand that okay maybe we need to go somewhere else or maybe continue on it, 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 see the thing is it's okay to have good relationships with people and then sometimes people are going to these to these business relationships with their own mental health issues too and, and things that they're dealing with yeah. so it's like we. Going into these relationships with people, we need to understand that they, that they, you, like you said, that they are business relationships. But then people bring a lot of stuff into that too. Mm -hmm. They bring a lot of emotional stuff into that, which you need to stop. You need to stop doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, we don't need to be in a business and, and, and nobody tell me I love you. know I love y'all. Like, th that's not necessary. You know what I'm saying? Let's just let's just add to the business at, 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 at hand. You know what I'm saying? Or you know, let's not make it just. Let's, we make sometimes we make things too personal. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? To where that's when we start feeling. And I, and I think that whole hater thing, too, in the black community, where if somebody disagrees with your idea, it's because they're hating on you. Mm. No, I'm not hating on you. I'm way too intelligent to hate on anybody else. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> they just might be dumb. Yeah. No, and it's not even that true. It's not even that the person is dumb. It's just that they have a different way of doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They have a different way of doing it. Because I remember. Um, I remember, I remember, me and Rick, that's why I used to like working, that's why I like working with Rick, because he's a good guy. He's yeah. Good. I remember one day he called me stupid. And I was like, are you stupid? And I was like, but if it was somebody else, I would have got mad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I'm just so smart that it seemed like I'm stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, listen, hey, I, I, I might want some people, some people say it with that one right there, you know what I'm saying? Okay, sorry, that's a question for you. So, I want to talk about, talk about legacy, right? Because... You doing what you're doing. How do you want people to remember you, as far as professionally, but then also personally? We want what the legacy to be. Professionally, professionally, that um, that I was always. This is something simple. Though. I was always on time. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. I was always on time. I, I'm never. He that was. He was here early too, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a friend. I have a friend. She said. Uh, I'm sure we were on Facebook the other day. She said, if, Ter if Terrence late, he did. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the first I ever heard that in reverse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, I, I, I'm always on time. Because you gotta, cause you, cause you got to consider people's time. Yeah. And then as far as like, um, professionally, as far as like um, socially, or what's the other word? Personally. Personally, 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 personally. Just remember that um, I mean everybody well. Mm. Like, like, I, I, like, um, I, I, I put a, like I said something. I, let me say one of my quotes. I put a lot into relationships, but I don't put a lot into relationships. Which means, mm. which means that if I'm like friends with you, right? I put. We a, don't go together no more. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we just friends now, right? Okay. okay. I put a lot into this friendship because, but 
if you decide that you don't really want to be my friend anymore, I'm not going to be cussing you out. I'm not going to put that much into this. I put mm -hmm. a lot into the relationship, but I don't put a lot into the relationship. Yeah. Just like, these are things that happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people seasons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? These are things that happen. Okay. That's good. Okay. Okay. And, okay. And this is the great thing about our podcast. You, you, you tell us so, you tell us so many great things today, man. And I want someone's watching this. They're saying, you know what? I want to be a writer. I want to be a comedian. I want to be a person that is a creative and I want to get my, my stuff out there. What three things would you like them to get from this episode that we talk about today? Um, stepping outside so stepping outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even stepping outside of the fact that because we are always telling like you told you a woman, right? And you told you a black woman, right? You know what I'm saying? And you told <laughs> that you, you told you a black man, right? Sometimes you step outside of just being those things. You're an American. You were you were you mm -hmm. a black man. You you are uh, whatever generation you are. You um, it, it, it makes you even more closer to somebody else that's not like you by being more things than, than what you are. So stepping outside yourself helps you to understand because once you only reach reaching like one, you only want to reach this one group, then you got to be really entitled to just reach this one group. Um, another thing that you need to learn if you want to do that is you know work hard. Yeah. Work hard. You gotta work hard and another thing is don't look at the end every time something will work out. Don't feel mm -hmm. like it's the end. Okay. Because the end could be right down the street. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. when you right 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 when you put right here, the end will be right down the street. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. Listen, um, we gotta do a part two. Um, <laughs> don't, don't worry, it's gonna, it's gonna come because I know you know what I'm saying. We, 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 you know what? I, I've been working on different things, but we don't have like a book discussion, a panel, or something like that. But I just want to talk about these intellectual things that we don't get a chance to talk about with a panel of people. So I would love to have that. Um, but let people know where they can reach you at. Uh, you can reach me. Um, my address is. <laughs> <laughs> you can reach me my um, on Instagram. At Steelbiz, S T E L B I Z Z. Yes. Uh, that's also my um, TikTok. That's also my uh, all the social media. That's all my social media. Steelbiz, and then um, on Facebook is Terrence Glade, T L A T R E S C E G L A B E, and that's where you can reach me. And then get ready to learn what, why why you on the one why, why y'all follow him. By the way, we're gonna hit y'all with that knowledge though. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. I want a uh, special shout out to my special guest today and whatnot. If y'all have not got a chance to subscribe to Becoming Overcomers, my man Brian is doing his thing uh, for, for, for just the mental health of, of us as the people and whatnot. And it's a great podcast to check out, man. So please subscribe and it will be in the show notes. We'll also, also have Terrence members in the show notes. And I also want to thank Samantha for coming on. And once again, if you guys need a host, you guys are looking forward to just a phenomenal person to be part of your event, Health Planet. So you know, talk to <laughs> and uh, by the way, y'all, let's let's. Can we, can we, I, I want to do an actual hand clap because this is episode ninety nine, y'all. And uh, what are we doing? <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. y'all get it. No, because uh, uh, David Shans said something great, man. Shout out to David Shans because he literally is the godfather of this podcast. We, I, I watch other people all the time. He said something great. He said most podcasts don't make a fat episode big. Here we are, episode almost 100. And it's because of great people like Tannis who come on and whatnot. And great hosts like you guys who come and help out and whatnot. So I want to thank the city of Cleveland and the great people who are, <laughs> who are a part of it that make this podcast possible. Because without y'all, we wouldn't be here or whatnot. And I just thank y'all once again for the support. Y'all, 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 y'all show every week or whatnot. So thank y'all. So uh, I can't feel better than that, y'all. Episode 99. 99. 99, y'all. So we'll 99. see y'all next week. You know what I'm saying? God, Lord willing, like the old people say. You know what I'm saying? But uh, thank y'all again.